Hi everyone, this is Andrew Tai and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to talk about why I've decided to upgrade my Apple TV 4K from 32GB to 64GB and why I think that this justifies the extra £20 or $20 extra that this involves. So today I'm going to talk about storage and how it's used and why you might want to upgrade and why you probably don't need to upgrade. So if you haven't subscribed already, then please consider pressing the subscribe button. It only takes a moment and you'll be able to keep up to date with the latest Mac tutorials. So when you're using an Apple TV, most people are going to use it strictly for streaming services only. So you have apps like Disney, Netflix, Prime Video, Apple TV, etc. And all of these apps on the mobile side have the ability to download video files onto your phone or onto your tablet. However, this functionality does not exist on the Apple TV. If I go into Netflix and I try to find a show, for example, Ozark, there's no option here to download that video. So there's no way for me to actually fill up the space on this Apple TV. There's no local storage being used and therefore I can't actually fill it up. The only space that is being used up by Netflix is the app itself. And that's like a tiny amount of space. It's only a hundred or so megabytes in size. Having lots of streaming apps is not going to fill up your space at all. If you're strictly going to stream video from the internet, then 32 gigabytes is all you're going to need. You don't need 64 gigabytes in space. So if you look at an app like Netflix, we're only using 37 megabytes of storage space and you could have 100 of these and they wouldn't even make a dent in 32 gigabytes of storage space. Other streaming apps, for example, Prime Video or YouTube, they're slightly larger in size, but they'll never be able to add up to 32 gigabytes in storage space. Now, in my opinion, the only reason that you would want to make use of the full amount of storage is if you're a game player. So one of the very cool things about the Apple TV is that you can pair a Bluetooth controller. So I'm using my Xbox One wireless controller here and I've paired it via Bluetooth. You can control the Apple TV with this controller. And what's cool is that you can go ahead and load up a game. What's cool is that a lot of games support the controller on the Apple TV. However, what you're going to find is that the game selection is extremely limited. So if I go to the App Store here and I look at the game section, there are actually not that many games available. You might find a few universal applications which are available on iPhone and iPad, so you might have some of those already. But basically, there are hardly any games on the App Store itself. However, if you are an Apple Arcade user, this is Apple's subscription service where you can subscribe and play a whole bunch of games. What you're going to find is that all of these games will support a controller and they're all playable on the Apple TV as well as on your iPhone and iPad and also Mac as well. So this gives you access to literally hundreds of different games. And what you're going to find is that these games are actually very large and you're going to run out of space very quickly. So here, for example, we've got a basic game Marble Knights, 3.76 gigabytes, and that's more than 10% of the 32 gigabytes of space. Of course, the space on the actual 32 gigabytes are taken up by the operating system as well as some system files, etc. So you don't really have that much space to play with. If you want to install lots and lots of different games on your Apple TV, then you're going to want to upgrade to the 64 gigabyte version. For example, if I want to get this NBA 2K22 game that started to download, and then I want to get Star Wars Castaways, and then I want to download Asphalt 8, what you're going to find is that your device does not have enough available storage. And you know, we didn't try to download that many games, but we're kind of full up already. So if I press OK here, I'll just show you how many games I have downloaded. And you know, if you want to have these all available for you without having to do that download process, then you're going to want to get the larger Apple Apple TV. So there is the option here if we go to settings and then apps, if we go down to apps here, and then we can actually click on offload unused apps. So what that means is that the apps will be removed, but the documents and data and things like login information will be saved. This is a handy thing to do, but if you really want to flick between multiple Apple Arcade games very quickly, then you're going to want the larger storage space. You can go ahead and offload certain apps at certain times, but in theory, you could save some space by offloading unused apps. And then also you could simply delete games that you don't play very often. What you could do is simply hold down when you're selecting an app, then you press the option button here, and then you can press the delete button and that'll delete that application from Apple TV. And that's gonna free up plenty of space. So anyway, I hope you found this video useful. I think that upgrading to the 64 gigabyte is a very niche thing to do. It's only really if you like playing games and you have an Apple Arcade subscription, because if you do like playing games and you don't have Apple Arcade, there's hardly anything you can actually play on the Apple TV. But if you like loading up lots of titles, then I suggest upgrading to the 64 Apple TV. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm gonna have a video tutorial in the description for how to actually migrate your data from one Apple TV to the other. So please check it out in the description. If you liked the video, please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.